Hi again, this is Shane Corder from BioTeam, Senior Scientific Consultant, and welcome back to HPC 101. Today we're going to be covering the topic of queuing and its importance in high performance computing. Also giving you a brief overview of some of the most commonly used schedulers and how to use those schedulers to submit jobs. When educating someone who is um, uninitiated in the space of high performance computing and supercomputing, I like to use the analogy of a hotel when discussing queuing. A hotel, just like a high performance computing system, hotels have many different layers of amenities or features in each room. And a high performance computing system may have different capabilities built into their system, whether that be standard compute nodes, compute nodes with large amounts of memory um, or large RAM nodes, or could be GPU nodes, even into specialty compute nodes. This tier of compute node may have specialty hardware such as FPGAs or other special hardware to do very specific tasks. So you can think of your standard compute node as your standard hotel room. A uh, single bed, um, bathroom, very minimal, um, but it gets the job done. The next layer of large RAM nodes may be looked at as more of like a business class suite. Then your GPU nodes can be looked at as more of an executive suite. And then your specialty nodes can be looked at as your presidential suite. The suite that often goes uninhabited and is lightly used except for a small group of users with those very specific needs. At the front desk of the hotel, you have the clerk. The clerk knows if any rooms are vacant and he knows the amenities of each room in order to place you, the client, in the correct room for your needs. The front desk clerk also has a very detailed view of the capacity of the hotel, how long each customer is staying, and what room that they are staying in. So just like a queuing system, the front desk clerk can either take your reservation over the phone for some time you know, near in the future, or you can walk straight to the desk, weary from your travels, and hopefully get a room right then. Now imagine you walk into the hotel with six of your closest friends. Four of your closest friends are just fine with the standard room. Uh, one of your friends decides they want a little bit of an upgrade and decide to go with a business class suite. Then you have that one friend who needs the presidential suite. The front desk clerk is able to accommodate you all and places you in the rooms in which you have specified and keeps a detailed record of who is in what room and um, the amenities that are available to those customers. So as you can tell from the diagram, the red X's are all of the current customers that were at the hotel or using the compute cluster prior to us. And now that we've wandered off the street, uh, the blue X's signify all of the rooms that are being taken up by you and your friends. So a queuing system and high performance computing scheduler allows for resource management of the, the compute cluster, allowing administrators and even other users to know exactly what is going on in the cluster, how many compute nodes are available, and what amenities or features are available to those users at, the, at a specific time. There's obviously much more that goes into a cluster queuing system, but that kind of gives you a high level view of what they do and what they're used for. So some of the most commonly used high performance compute schedulers out there include Slurm, Grid Engine, Torque, which includes Moab and Maui, PBS, and LSF. Every queuing system has its differences. Some HPC administrators will swear by one and um, tell you the other ones are junk. I've actually had the pleasure or opportunity, I should say, to work with all of these schedulers in my career. LSF is probably the least likely to be come across. Torque is actually built off of the original PBS project. Grid Engine has multiple iterations, both commercial and open source. And Slurm has probably become one of the most commonly used schedulers out there, at least in terms of BioTeam customers and what they use. So today, we're only going to focus on Slurm and Grid Engine. So Slurm stands for Simple Linux Utility for Resource Management. It is open source. It's uh, very scalable. Um, and like I said before, one of the most widely used, at least in what uh, BioTeam sees from our customers. Some of Slurm's 
capabilities include job scheduling, of course, container support, heterogeneous resource support, such as GPUs and some of those more specialty hardwares, MPI support, job preemption and priority support, detailed account tracking, uh, energy consumption tracking, which is uh, very relevant in today's world with uh, the obscene amount of energy and power that high performance computing clusters use. Uh, Task affinity, which allows users to um, tie a certain workload to a particular, um, in this case, CPU. And advanced resource reservation. Thinking back to our analogy earlier, this would be something akin to calling the front desk of a hotel and reserving your hotel room for weeks or months in advance. Next, we've got Grid Engine. I won't go into the history of Grid Engine because it's uh, too long for this video, but um, in its current state, we've got Univa Grid Engine, which actually Altair just bought Univa, so I guess I should say Altair Grid Engine, and Open Grid Scheduler. Univa Grid Engine is a licensed and commercially supported product. Um, and Open Grid Scheduler is an open source workload manager that uh, is, is taken care of by the community. Obviously, being that they're both built off of Grid Engine, they both offer a lot of the same features and capabilities, such as job scheduling, obviously, cloud and hybrid HPC support. So, uh, bursting into the cloud and um, both on on premise cloud and uh, into your favorite um, AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. Something to mention, Univa does have a lot of capabilities built around the cloud and hybrid functionality of Grid Engine that Open Grid Scheduler does not, but they both offer the same base uh, utility of uh, cloud and hybrid support. Hadoop integration, um, container support, heterogeneous resource support, so still allowing uh, GPUs and some of the more specialty hardware, MPI support, job preemption and priorities, uh, detailed accounting tracking, again, energy consumption tracking, task affinity, advanced resource reservation, and drama job API support. So now I'd like to go over how to write a submission script, how to submit that job to the queue, how to monitor your job, and how to delete your job if it airs out. So first, this is my basic Slurm submission script. Slurm variables all start by calling hashtag sbatch. So the first variable is dash dash partition equals. And in this case, it's general dash compute. It will be different depending on what cluster you are connected to, but this is just an example. The partition is what is specified in other queuing systems as a queue. So next we have sbatch dash dash nodes equals two. So this specifies how many compute nodes are actually going to be used in your job. Next is dash dash in tasks dash per. And that specifies how many slots per node are going to be used. Next, sbatch dash dash constraint equals IB. Constraints are not always used or needed in your submission script. I simply put this in, as an example to only call on compute nodes that have InfiniBand as a feature. Next is dash dash mem equals. This specifies the upper limit of memory that is going to be used per node, not per CPU. Dash dash job dash name obviously is the name of the job that you specify. It can be anything that you want. In this case, it's hello underscore or test. Next is dash dash output. This is the name of the output file for both standard error and standard out. At the end here, you'll see an export call for the library for MPI. This may not be needed depending on the particular environment set up for your user and on the particular cluster that you're running on. The last line calls srun, which tells Slurm to submit a job. After you have everything tweaked in your script, you can save and exit and come back to the command line. Once at the command line, you'll issue the sbatch command and the name of your script. And in this case, the entire name of my script is hello world srun. After submitting the command, you'll be given a confirmation that the job was submitted to the queue by submitted batch job one. Now with the confirmation, we know that the job 
is in the queue. And to check the status of our job in the queue, the SQ command is issued with dash U and the name of the user. And in this case, fake user is my username. The output of the command gives you a column based output with job ID, partition, the name of the job, which in this case is different from the name of the script that we submitted, and username, the state of the job, the time which it was submitted, and the nodes that are included with the job. And in this case, you will see the state of the job is PD, which means it's queued and waiting. So it hasn't quite started yet. If you run this command again, you will see an R instead of a PD. In the event that the job either errors out or you find an error in your script, you can issue the S cancel and the number of job that you want to cancel. In this case, since we're the first person on this cluster, it is one. So S cancel one cancels your job and takes you back to a clean slate. So as you saw when we were looking into the Slurm submission script and the hashtag sbatch variable, Grid Engine uses a different variable to specify variable calls to the script. And in this case, it's hashtag dollar sign. So our first variable is dash PE. The dash PE in a Grid Engine script signifies a parallel environment. Parallel environment is a way for Grid Engine to more tightly integrate with MPI. So in particular, this parallel environment is calling O. MPI 4, which is signifying the open MPI variant of MPI. Other clusters may have MPitch or MVAPitch, depending on the uh, particular flavor of MPI that they use on that cluster. The next is dash N, which is the name of the job, not the script. So in this case, our job name is hello underscore test. The next is dash CWD, which instructs Grid Engine to start the script from the current working directory. The next two are for output and error logs. So in this particular case, this script is calling for two different output files. However, you can include the dash Y variable to combine the two outputs into a single file. The next few lines are not specific to Grid Engine, but uh, a way to more easily call your MPI job and export variables depending on the system that you're on. Again, just like the Slurm job, you you may not need to export these additional paths to your environment depending on the system that you're running on. The last line in the script is an MPI exec call to run your job, which tells MPI to use a certain amount of slots for your job and then the name of your MPI program. After saving and exiting the script, you're back on the command line. From here, you can issue the QSub command to your specific script. In this case, it's hello world QSub. You will get a confirmation after issuing the command telling you that the job was submitted to the queue. From that point, you can call the qstat-u command with the user to see the status of your job. And in this case, you'll see that it is job number one, priority of zero. The name of the job is hello underscore test, which again is different from the name of the script that you submitted. The username, the state of the job, which in this particular case it is R, so that signifies that the job is running. The job was submitted at this date and it's running on the all.q. So again, queues and partitions, depending whether you're talking in Slurm or in Grid Engine, are basically the same thing. You have queues in Grid Engine, you have partitions in Slurm. So if your job is running and no errors are detected, there's no reason to run the final command qdel1. That command will stop the compute nodes from working on that particular workload. In the event you do have a job that goes into a failed state, you can use the qdel command to kill that job and stop the compute nodes from working on that job. When you issue either the s cancel command or the qdel command, that tells the queuing systems to free up those worker nodes for additional jobs to come into the queue and start working. So I hope that this gives you a working knowledge of at least Slurm and Grid Engine. Um, again, you may come across one of those other queuing systems such as Torque or PBS or LSF, but uh, the, the general idea and the general functions of a queue and a scheduler um, are, are all the same. You'll have ways of submitting jobs. You'll have ways of monitoring jobs. You'll have ways of cleaning up those jobs in order to uh, give it another try. So thanks for watching this episode of HPC 101. Happy computing. Happy computing.